you know, I'm not sold on this guy, but for some reason it seems like the Clippers are sold on him. And the guy I want to speak about in regards to the Clippers, uh, before I get into that, I will say this. Um, I've said before the Clippers have, you know, uh, the thinnest spot in the Clippers roster is to me their center position. Um, But at the same time, as I said, they still can win a championship the way they're constructed because they are uh, that good of a team. Uh, I feel like any team with Kawhi Leonard on there can definitely win a championship because he's proven to win a championship with a team with no other superstar in the day and age of where teams have multiple superstars and multiple help. And Kawhi Leonard found a way to to get two championships in an era where, you know, he's had help, but, you know, he's He's had to do a lot of the bulk load to get them the championships, even with San Antonio. You know, he was on San Antonio with the big three. But how old were they? I mean, Tim Duncan was out of his prom. So was Ginobili. And Tony was pretty much out of his, too, or, or, or getting there, you know. And so he carried that franchise the season that they went that after they lost the finals against Miami and came back the next season. He carried them in the playoffs. Uh, or especially in the finals, he carried them, you know, to help win the uh, championship because they basically put the ball in his hands and the team was his. Then he goes to Toronto and does the same thing with even lesser talent. And it just shows how great of a player he is. So I believe any team that the point I'm trying to make, any team that Kawhi Leonard's on can definitely can easily win a championship because I think he's just that good. And to me, he's my favorite player. And to me, he's the best player in the league when healthy. And to me, it's not debatable. I mean, some people can make it debatable, but it's not. But even still, um, the Clippers, you know, here lately have converted a two way deal for this player and the player that I'm not really sold on. And I'm not saying I'm not sold on because he doesn't have talent. I'm just not sold on because I haven't seen enough. That's my perspective of the situation. And the player I'm speaking about is uh, Moses Brown. You know, he came to the Clippers, I'd say, about a month or two ago within the offseason, I believe, uh, give or take somewhere around that time, them getting him. And, you know, they've liked him a lot. And um, don't get me wrong. You know, he um, he has he, he has great size. He possesses great size. You know, he's a strong guy, you know, or should I say he's a strong rebounder. I, he, he, he gets rebounds very well. You know, he, he positions his body well in the paint and boxes out well. He does the little things good. You know, he plays hard. Um, his skill set is kind of uh, limited a little, I would say. But at the same time, you know, he, um, he he's really more for uh, he's really more like a body. And that's what the Clippers need. The Clippers just need bodies, you know, in that center position. They need bodies to fulfill the roster and just to have somebody there to, you know, come behind Zubak because they don't have no substantial big man with a real name anymore as they did with uh you know, um, Serge Ibaka and they end up letting him go, I guess, because they didn't think Serge would stay healthy enough to, you know, play at the level he once did. And plus Serge is just really, you know, older now. And, um, he barely last year when he got traded, I think, or the year before when he got traded to the Milwaukee Bucks, I didn't see him play that much at all. So apparently, you know, maybe the Clippers were right. Maybe, you know, Serge just doesn't have it anymore. You know, who knows? But either way, um, you know, they got Moses Brown and, uh, he is supposed to be the backup to uh, Ivica Zubak and he will be and uh, personally I think that um, they should give Musa Diabate uh, they should give him uh, you know some playing time in the center position as well with his with his athleticism and his uh, high motor high energy you know um, high enthusiasm that he has he definitely needs to see the floor as well in that center position I think so um, and actually to be honest you know the two way deal that they made uh, the other part of that two way deal they made um, was was involving uh, uh, Musai uh, Diabate so um, you know shout out to him too you know for you know hanging in there playing hard and you know giving all he's got because he's being rewarded for that so far so and uh, i'll say shout out to moses brown too like i said i have nothing against him personally i just haven't seen enough from him i haven't seen enough from uh, uh musa either but um the little bit i did see from musa i was a little bit more impressed because like i said you know musa he seems more like the replacement for isaiah hartenstein because he plays with that same type of chip on his shoulder and he is a high motor high 
high energy guy. You see what I'm saying? And that's how Isaiah Hartenstein was, you know, for the Clippers last year. He was a high energy guy right behind Zubak. And he was like a perfect fit for the Clippers of having a, a good backup center that they felt like they know what they were getting every night. He stepped out on the floor and maybe uh, Diabate could be that or, you know, possibly Moses, you know, Brown could be that. So, I mean, both of them have an opportunity there. And uh, I think both of them will get, uh, you know, you know, some decent amount of playing time. So there shouldn't be no discrepancy there. But at the same time, I feel like, um, you know, Moses Brown, like I said, he's a seven footer. Um, he's a pretty good rebounder. He boxes out well and all those things. Um, you know, he's he's been around a little bit, though. You know, that's my thing. You know, uh, he's been, I'd say, in the league, uh, I'd say since 2020 or something like that, 19, somewhere in there. You know, and he I know he played for the Thunder and the Mavericks. And I believe he played for the Cavaliers as well. Also, I also think that he played for the Blazers, too. So, I mean, I might not be 100 percent on the Blazers, but I do. I do believe he played for the Blazers as well. But even still, you know, since he's been in the league and you know he's had about close to 30 or 40 starts in the past, like three seasons, two or three seasons, you know, uh, three or four seasons. I think he I think it's three seasons. Yeah, three seasons. He's been in the NBA. Excuse me. And, um, you know, he he's. He's a solid big man, I would say. He could be a solid big man for a team, a solid backup, I would say, you know, for a team. You know, he averages only about like six points a game and five rebounds. And to me, that's a decent, that's an all right backup, but that's not really good enough. As a backup, you know, um, but, well, I guess it depends on how many minutes you get, too. So as a backup, you know, he didn't do bad, you know, six points, maybe about five or six rebounds. He shot like 55 percent from the floor. Um, he shot like 60 percent from the charity stripe, which was actually kind of um, shocking. But of course, that's more or less probably due to the fact that, you know, he probably took uh four three or four three pointers in his career or certain shots in his career and just happened to make a couple of them so i mean that's a very little or very minimal um output you know with in, in regards to the percentage that he's shooting from the charity strike so i really can't base nothing off that too much i have to see more to really get more of a grasp and uh you know more of an understanding um and the reason why i say that you know he's a limited big man is because he's not like a passing big man or anything like that you got some big men who could pass really well like when they had boogie cousins boogie cousins can you know get his own basket but he was also a decent passing big man from the post you know what i'm saying finding the right guy who can knock down the shot plus command a double team because of his physicality and the way he plays and the way he you know commands a presence in the paint even though he's not the player he once was he still has a little bit of that dominance in him at times where he can display it and you know he's also a good passer so that's one thing i noticed that you know moses brown is not a good passer from out the post you know where Whereas Zubak is decent. He's not bad. He's decent in far as passing out the post. But I mean, he's not the greatest either. But it, that part really doesn't make doesn't matter too much. It's always just a plus to have a big man who can, you know, give you some assists, you know, along with, you know, a presence in the paint. So my thing is, you know. I don't know how many minutes Moses is going to um, exert this year or put in with the Clippers. I don't know exactly how much, you know, Ty Lue plans on utilizing his skill set to better the Clippers chances of being a well-rounded team and more deeper team in, in every position. But I think he will get some playing time. And I think, you know, going into the season, I think, you know, um, I'll be able to formulate or form more of an analysis of, you know, Moses Brown and see what he's really made of and what he really can do and how he can help this team. But I mean, the fact that he is a big body, the fact that he can rebound pretty decent from what I've seen, and the fact that he's not afraid to go up there and attempt to, you know, block some shots and, you know, get physical at times with guys that definitely lets me know that. And the, and the fact that he's 23 years old, he's got a long way to go. If he can just, you know, find a home possibly with the Clippers and build on what, you know, he already has in his skill set and let Ty Lu guide him and allow his skill set to flourish, you know, more over time where he can be, you know, 
not only a backup center, but you know, Ty Lue would trust to put him in there as the actual center if something happened to Zubak or if they traded Zubak or injury or anything like that. So, you know, that's where I think Ty Lue would like to see this kid, but hopefully, you know, um, hopefully he, he would be able to do that. But I mean, that's not a guarantee. So you can't really, you know, say too much there. You just have to wait and see. But um, as far as, like I said, having the body and size and just the, you know, filling the roster spot. Yeah, Moses Brown definitely fits that. But um, from what I see, the Clippers really like what he does. They like the way he plays and they really find some interest in him, you know, for real. Because, like I said, they gave him the two way deal, which he was on an Exhibit 10 contract at first. And it turned into a two way deal. And uh, Musa Diabate already has he has the other two way deal. So, you know, they're they're looking good with these two players in their mind because they feel like one is a strong re rebound and the other one is just full of energy and full of athleticism so you know it uh, even though Diabate really isn't a center but he is a power forward with length and a good wingspan where he can play the center position and that type of energy and you know um that he plays with can only carry over as a spark and a good thing for the Clippers when he steps out on the floor it's always good to have a guy like that so you know we appreciate that and um hopefully you know we get to see more from him I want to see more from him I want to see more from Moses Brown as well because I think Zubak is definitely going to need their help in regards to especially Moses Brown he's going to need his help in regards to really securing that number two backup role as a center because there's times where Zubak plays not up to his capabilities, some would say. <laughs> and um, when those times happen, you definitely have to have somebody on the back end who you can throw in there who can make up for what Zubak might not be doing, specifically that game or that series if you're in the playoffs or not. So um, I want to see more from Moses Brown. I know you guys do. Uh, and first of all, honestly, I want to see more from the team as a whole i want to see Kawhi leonard you know pg i want to see all the main guys too but of course i also want to see the guys on the back end like a moses brown because those guys help make a championship team as well too so you know if he can play to the what they whatever expectations they have of him which in my opinion i don't think he's gonna play you know um a whole lot but i think you know he'll play enough to where you know he you know people will know his skill set after a while and they'll know what he can bring to this team in regards to the postseason because as much as Ty Lue wants to play small ball he still needs to have size in the paint just in case they play a team where the matchup doesn't favor them because as I said they play a team like the the Memphis Grizzlies hypothetically the Memphis Grizzlies got Steven Adams in the paint Steven Adams com commands more of a presence than Zubak he commands more of a presence than Moses Brown and Moses Brown himself as well too so I mean it's like when you have somebody like that in the paint Steven Adams is not really a legitimate score or anything like that but he still can get rebounds he's still a really good offensive rebounder too which is you know really crazy to say because he is getting older but he still can rebound very well and he still you know makes his mark in a game even though he's doing all little things he still gets noticed by some of the little things that he does that helps Memphis be the team that they've became you know since they got John Moran and acquired him and others other pieces that they have on the team so that could be a bad matchup for the Clippers if Zubak doesn't play well and this is what I'm saying Zubak has moments where he doesn't show up as in what some Clippers fans want him to so having a good legitimate backup is vitally important for this team you know even though they're deciding to play small ball it's still vitally important to have a backup that you really really trust because you know Zubak is really the only big man that they have now they don't have Boogie Cousins they don't have Serge Ibaka like they had they had two legitimate really good backups for Zubak I mean basically you know one is possibly a Hall of Famer possibly in um you know Serge Ibaka and one was on the verge of being a superstar at one time which was Boogie Cousins and they were both Zubox backup so that was a perfect situation I thought the Clippers had but of course that's not there now and then Isaiah Hardenstein left too so you know you gotta hope that um these two-way deal pieces that the Clippers have added you know to their roster can fill out and um live up to what they need in regards to you know having that depth in that area but as I always say only time will tell the season's right around the corner matter of fact it's like a day 
you know, a day away. So um, if that's the case, let's see what Ty Lue's plans is. Let's see how he implements everybody. Let's see, you know, let's let's see the strength and weaknesses of this team in regards to their center position specifically. And that's the one thing I'm going to pay attention to the most because they're strong in every other area. So I'm not worried. They'll filter those out. That center position is what I kind of worry about with the Clippers. That could be looked at kind of like a weakness for them. So let's see what happens. Let's see if Moses Brown plays up to expectation or better. And um, let's see how the um, everything works out for him going into the season. But hey, that's my take on everything. Leave any comments in the comment section. Check my other videos if you haven't. And hey, Kelly out.